All right, good morning, Shmita, and welcome back to True Crime Loser. Yeah. I feel like in like a year, this channel's just gonna have so many inside jokes that unless you've watched every episode, it's just gonna be totally incoherent. I can't wait for someone to be like, this guy doesn't even make sense. I'm gonna be like, well, you gotta check your pictures. Um, how's it going? That's good. All right, so today, day two of Philip Markov. What's up, Phil? How you doing? So yesterday, did the backstory. If you didn't watch it, give it a watch. Today, we're going to get to know Phil a little bit, and then maybe get to the interrog part of the in first part of the interrogation. I don't know. Maybe that'll be the next one. But first, I want to talk about the mistakes that he made. If Hypothetically, if he was going to get away with these crimes... What mistakes did he made that is just going to make that not possible? And then try to figure out why he did it. Just a young, smart, med school student out there committing armed robbery and murder. Especially the age. Just 22 or... I think he was 22 when he did it and then 23 soon after he was arrested. And But... That just seems young to me. Um, but yeah, all right, so let's get into some of the mistakes he made. Number one, there was no attempt at all to hide his face, either from victims or from the security cameras. Which is kind of baffling, because where he did it, and I've never been to Boston so if you're from Boston or live there, correct me if I'm wrong. But where he did it, I think, is like a giant mall called the Prudential Center. It's probably a bunch of things. But it seems like kind of a giant mall with a bunch of hotels attached to it. And I think it's a very high tourist area. And it's tons of restaurants and tons of shopping and a bunch of hotels. And so... All the security cameras that they have of old Phil is him walking around this giant Prudential Center mall thing. So there's just a tons of footage of him just like walking through. And it's real blurry, but he's got sort of this big, you know, frame and sort of this walk and a big nose. And so you can kind of tell it's him. And... Um, I guess that he would think that he doesn't have to, if he just wears a hat and there's so many people and so many tourists and the place is so big that they would never be able to, I don't know, find the person that, but to me it seems really simple. It's like, okay, what time did the incident happen? All right, well, let's just look in the next 30 minutes at all the cameras and see who's there. That's, of course, what they did. So for someone as smart as Phil, he graduated college in three years, summa cum laude, which is at the top of his class. So he's not a dummy. But that's... It's just dumb. I mean, what, what did he think was going to happen? That they just were going to be like, well, we got all these cameras, but I think it's going to be too time-consuming to go through them, you know? I just think it's going to be a lot of work. It's like, what are you talking about, Phil? Of course they're going to painstakingly look at the can. They're going to have some young detective like, hey, hey, Larry, you got to look at all these hours and hours of tapes. Let us know if you find someone. I just, I don't know how Philip could go home the night after knowing that he was on all those cameras and go to sleep because I if it were me I would just be like oh crap I'm on all those cameras this was a horrible idea they're gonna see me leaving but anyway so no attempt to hide face also his first victim that he didn't kill that he just robbed the blonde escort saw his face and got a good look at his face which she's the one that ended up 
IDing him in the pictures. They checked the pictures. Um, so she checked their pictures and confirmed, and then that's why they arrested him. So, yeah, for being a real smart guy, Philip kind of blew it on that one. All right, so second mistake that is fingerprints or alleged fingerprints. The trial, as we'll talk about, doesn't really get this far. But the fingerprints all over the tape, he had gloves on at first, but ended up taking them off in order to, which I picture is kind of funny, like he's got these big black gloves on, like, I'm a criminal, I'm living this, I'm not. I'm not a clean cut med school student that has a dentist for a dad. I'm a criminal. Like I, th- I think he just lo- like was bored maybe with this med school. Uh, sorry, I got a text. Um, I think he was bored with this, and so he's like, "All right, I'm gonna go out." And commit the, you know, live this second life. And he's got these black leather gloves on. And then he wants to tape her mouth. And he, I picture he can't, like, pull the little piece of tape on. He's like, oh, fuck. Takes his, <laughs> takes his gloves off. And so it's just sloppy. The whole thing. Um, all right. Second, he called the first escort that he let go off his number. So his cell phone number is on her phone and he again without gloves on sits there and while well, she's tied up and after he's like stuffed her underwear underwear hmm? after he stuffed the underwear in his pockets he's sitting there like furiously trying to delete his number and i think he did delete it but surely some fbi computer nerd could have found it so again it's just I have the same feeling as some of the other murders. It's like, did he even really want to get away with this? It's almost just feels like a life suicide, the way that, like a Stephen McDaniel, Stiven, why Stiven? Almost the way that, like an old Stiven McDaniels, where he just, it's like, you're about to graduate, you're about to be a lawyer, what are you doing? You're not going to get... Um, So his phone number's in the escort's phone, but he deleted it. And then just the holy grail of of what are you doing, Phil, is the IP address. He sent an email to the woman that he murdered from his apartment. And they were easily able to take the email from the poor woman's phone or her email account, trace the IP address to Phillip's apartment, the exact apartment. And then they are able to look it up and it's like, oh, a guy named Philip Markoff and his girlfriend lives there. I wonder what he looks like. Oh, he looks exactly like the guy that's just like walking around the Prudential Center Right when all these murderers, right after all this stuff, I guess there's only one murder, but right after all this stuff happened, um, all right, second is he kept the gun, so they were able to find the gun and test it, and it was the murder weapon, it was in a book, the old classic, like, carve the pages out of a book and he had it in like his one of his medical books and he had bought in the gun I think a year or two before with a fake ID so to me that means I think he knew he just had this side for thrill or violence or control I don't know I don't know what led to but it's a real shitty just uh need to fulfill it's like you got to go out and dominate there's like a weird like dominate dominating aspect to it and a overpowering aspect to it and a robbing aspect to it i think he needed money because he had this we'll talk about it in a second but he's i think his main vice was gambling 
So if your main vice is gambling and all you have is student loans, it's not a great conversation. It's not a great combination. So we love to gamble, but he's gambling on the money that he's borrowed for. So that's probably a horrible feeling. So it's this, uh, he gets money, he gets a thrill. He seems to want to dominate and scare women. So he gets that. He seems to kind of like live in like a nightlife. Like I, I put on my leather jacket and my leather gloves and my, my gun and I pull my hat down and then I head out into the night type of thing. And uh, the rush of it, right? So we had the gun. So they found the gun in his apartment. So that wasn't going to. I wasn't going to last long. Also, the underwear. He kept souvenirs of the underwear. Underwear? Rusty! That's not your underwear, Russ. That's my underwear, Rusty. Um, I was thinking if I did true crime, true crime loser underwear as merch to have, like, not your underwear, Rusty. My underwear, Rusty. Um, yeah, so we loved gambling. And I don't know if he was in gambling debts. That would maybe make sense why he just would do something this stupid. But um, so he's out there gambling and probably needs money. Bought the gun a year before. Yeah, so that to me, he's thinking, you know, I'm going to do something illegal. Because why would you want to buy a gun with a fake ID if you weren't planning to do crime? Because I think it would be illegal if you got caught with it, if you bought it with a fake ID. Because they would be like, this isn't... So if you just want a gun, you might as well just do it the right way because then you have to worry about it. But So he bought a gun with a fake ID. Um, I was really wondering as I watch it, what was he thinking after it? after he did this? So say after he, you know, sh- shot and killed that girl and then he leaves through the hotel lobbies just like you know trying to look natural and then he gets back to his little apartment in Quincy and he's sitting there and was he thinking like oh my god that was so fun so fun I'm I'm jacked with adrenaline and I just can't wait to do it again or was it a oh my god Phil what are you doing why do you do this you're going to get caught. You're going to go away. How are you going to sleep tonight? They're going to go bang on the door. What are you doing? Why do you have to do this, Phil? Phil, why, Phil? Why? Um, Because I'd love to know. Because he kills that girl, which seems to be, would be a traumatic, horrible experience, like a wake-up call. It's like, what the hell am I doing? Going out in the night and robbing escorts. What am I doing? I'm going to get caught. I have this great life. My dad's a dentist. Um, you know, does he is he looking at his hands like, why do I do this? Or is it like that was badass? And then two nights later, he's doing it again. So is it like, does he need the money for gambling debts? It's so weird. Um, also, too, he's into... Uh, like alternative sex websites and all, his screen name on all of them was Sex Attic and a bunch of random numbers. So I think he definitely had some weird uh, sex things that maybe were okay and kind of just weird but he- sort of he- fine and healthy for the most part for a while and then maybe it crossed the line into what it turned into or I don't know and uh, then one thing I got wrong yesterday is they're not Megan and Phil are not boyfriend and girlfriend they're engaged to be married like engaged where they have this website up where you can they have like register to buy them plates or something and there's a a timer counting down the days till they're married like Phil and Megan count down till the marriage save the date. Blah, blah, blah. And so maybe he felt from like his very 
normal, vanilla, dentist dad ting, upbringing that he just was being forced to be a doctor and live this, uh, live this, I don't know, it doesn't seem boring to me, but live this boring med school, get married early life, and he just rebelled against that. But he, as it comes out, which is why that Megan's test or interrogation is so fascinating to me. She's annoying to listen to, but in a, in an hour or however long it is, she goes from thinking, "All right, I'm about to marry a doctor. I'm about to marry a doctor. Have this life." You know, she could probably picture the whole thing. And in an hour, at the end of her interrogation, she's asking the cops, should I be worried to go home with Phil? Phil. Um, should I be worried? So in that hour, it's like her whole, it's, which is sad, her whole, her, her whole life just crumbles. Which is probably one of the, other than the poor girl that got murdered, I feel bad for Megan too. And... So what was his strategy? Was there any to get away with it? Because it was a lot of just mistakes. So if there was a strategy at all, I think that it was one, he didn't think that escorts would report it. I don't think he thought the first escort would report the armed robbery. She, she's like, I'm an escort, and so I'm not going to call the cops and be like, hey, while escorting. But he was wrong, which is great. Good, good for her. And good for the cops for just sort of being like, yeah, we don't care. We just want the guy with a gun wandering around the mall. Um, and then I guess, too, that the cops wouldn't put too much time, even if the escort did call it in, wouldn't put too much time into it. And so it would just sort of die away quickly. And then the third, I think, his strategy was that he just doesn't seem like someone that would do that in the sense of he's really young, he's med school, um, which I guess means he's smart, right? And so I think he thinks that the cops are going to be like, it's not the 22-year-old med school guy. No way it's him out here in the night with a gun leather jacket um all right how long am i going uh, all right so we're to the interrogation i'm trying to decide whether i should just cut it off for tomorrow or not but um so what's wild about this interrogation like i said yesterday is Girlfriend gets back into town from being in Jersey trying to get her back pain figured out, and he's kind of just been on his own, which someone commented yesterday that, man, these guys, once, they're, once their woman's out of town, just all hell breaks loose. And we've seen that with Chris and um, now Phil, and it seems like someone else, but it's... It's like these poor women, they go out of town and they have no idea that it's just a nightmare. They're like, hey, how's it going? Are you eating the leftovers I made you? And Phil's like, yes. <laughs> so they get pulled over, bunch of cops. They look at each other like, what the hell is going on? And I'm sure Megan was thinking like, what is the hell is going on? And Phil was like, uh-oh. If you've pulled off things like Phil did and you see a bunch of cop cars behind you with the lights on, that's got to be a horrible feeling. But I will say that he doesn't seem too scared as he sits down in the interrogation. Also, he does the can't, I can't remember uh, technique because a lot of the interrogation is just like, okay, so there's a picture that looks exactly like you in this hotel. Were you in the hotel? Which seems like it'd be hard to be like, yeah, I don't know, I don't remember. Like, were you in the hotel? But he does a pretty good job of it. For a while. It gets absurd after a while. Um, but for the first nine minutes of the interrogation, it's him... If it's them going through the his rights, so it's like you know you got the right to remain silent and stuff, and 
he really wants to just get a lawyer. Um, so they, they read him the rights and stuff, and they, you know, say, okay, you know, this is, we're homicide detectives, and have you heard of what's going on? And he's like, no, I, haven't, I don't know anything. And they're like, well, have you watched the news? And he's like, no, I haven't really, you know, young kids like me don't watch the news. I'm in med school. I don't really watch the news. And they're like, so you know nothing of what's going on. And I don't know if it's just his strategy in here, but Phil has the personality of a cinder block. And so we're all going to have to dig deep to find the humor and the funny lines out of Phil because it's pretty bland, and maybe that's another reason why he just wanted to go out and, and have these crazy thrills and dominate because maybe he's just kind of a dud in real life. Um, all right, so anyway, they're like, all right, you know, you can have a lawyer present if you, you know, you have the right to have a lawyer present. And he's like, all right, I'll have a lawyer. And they're like, well, you know, we don't get you a lawyer if you want a lawyer then we, we you know that would be if you got arrested you're not arrested yet that would be if you get arrested and then the courts deem that you don't have any money or your family doesn't have any money they do a really good job of being like you know they also look into your family's money so if papa dentist has money he'll be paying for the lawyer but phil's like yeah i don't know what's going on i should probably just get a lawyer like once they say hom homicide and the robberies in the hotels he he's just like yeah i should probably get a lawyer but doesn't really raise his voice or look too scared just does a pretty good job of just being like yeah this seems serious i need a lawyer and so for nine minutes they kind of go back and forth of like okay well you know you can get a lawyer and you have the right to get a lawyer but you know, you'll, you'll want to use, they make it sound really a pain in the ass to get a lawyer. At one point they're like, okay, so you do get a phone call. And so what you want to do is call a lawyer and get a lawyer. Well, Phil's a broke college murderer. And he's thinking, he's saying like, I don't have any money and I don't even know how to get a lawyer. And they're like, all right, well, we don't give you a lawyer. We, you have the right to get a lawyer. And if you want to get a lawyer, and then they do a really good job. The strategy they get him to talk is they say something to the effect of like, Phil, you know, these are very serious crimes that are coming in. And um, we, we're following the tips on a bunch of people. As you can imagine, as we're putting out pictures to this, a lot of people are calling in and saying, hey, this looks like my neighbor. Or, hey, this looks like a guy that comes in my work every day. And... Um, the, the cop, the co-op is like, I'll be honest with you. One of these pictures looks a lot like you. And so because of that and some other things, you're a person of interest. And Phil goes, what other things? And that's the first time that he, instead of just being like, ah, I should probably get a lawyer. I'll probably should take a lawyer. Wait, you guys can't get me a lawyer. And then it's a real good strategy to be like, because of the picture and other things. Other things, Phil. Hmm? Think about that for a little bit. Other things, Phil. Huh? Gonna sleep good knowing that I said other things, Phil? Philly boy? And so Phil instantly wants to know the other things. So he then, they, then for like another few minutes, they're going like, wait, so can you get me a lawyer? And they're like, no, well, we can, if you, we arrest you, then you ha will have the chance to get a lawyer or you could, you know, stop this conversation and not hear about the other things, Phil. Um, and then they're like, but you can stop whenever you want. And then Phil, you could tell, just can't handle the not knowing what the other things are. And he's just like, all right, I'll talk, but I can, I can quit whenever I want, right? And they're like, yeah, anytime you want to quit. And he's like, okay, you know, let's talk about this. And boom, the interrogation is off and running. That's where I'm going to cut it off. That's the show. To everybody that participates, comments, I got the best comment section in the game. I really do. Who can argue with that? So funny. Funny to the point where last week, 
can't remember one of the days I was super busy with one of my jobs in the morning. So the day before, I was like, I'm gonna try to record two True Crime Loser episodes in a row and then post one and then I'll have it done for the next day. And I recorded one and then I just couldn't do it because so much of the episodes are is like I ramble, you know, for a while and then I post it and then you guys riff off of what I say and then the next day I riff off of what you guys said off of what I said and then it just it keeps the cases take like this life of their own through the comments and everything. And so I, I didn't record two because I was like, it'll be, it would be weird to record one without knowing the comments for the day before. But anyway, I love the comment section. To everyone that likes, it really helps me so much. Um, if you would like to support this channel on Patreon, I would really appreciate it. It helps a lot. That's the only reason I'm going to get merch going. <clears throat> you know, I got coffee mugs and t-shirts and hopefully hats are coming soon too, but that is all thanks to the people that are the patron the Patreon, the patrons on Patreon. So thank you guys so much. The show's got a little budget thanks to them. And uh yeah, hope you have a good day. True Crime Loser out. Why, Stav and why, Schmida.